Hello friends, today we discuss about relation between bulk modulus and Young's modulus. First we understand what is the meaning of bulk modulus and Young's modulus. Bulk modulus that means when a body is subjected to three mutually perpendicular stresses of equal intensity then the ratio of direct stress to the corresponding volumetric strain is known as bulk modulus. So bulk modulus, what is the symbol of bulk modulus? That is K. It is the ratio of stress to volumetric strain. And what is the meaning of volumetric strain? Volumetric strain, that means it is the ratio of change in volume to the original volume. So bulk modulus K, that means stress divided by change in volume divided by original volume. Next is Young's modulus. Young's modulus is defined as the ratio of direct stress and direct strain. So modulus of elasticity or Young's modulus that symbol is capital E. So it is the ratio of stress to strain. So capital E is equal to stress by strain. So we can write linear strain that means sigma divided by capital E. So linear strain that means it is the ratio of stress to modulus of elasticity. Next one is Poisson Ratio. Poisson Ratio is defined as the ratio of lateral strain to linear strain. So what is the meaning of strain? Strain that means here we consider one bar and if we apply tensile force then the length of this element is changed. So the change in length per unit original length of a member is known as a linear strain. Linear strain that means change in length divided by original length. So when the change in longitudinal direction is taking place, changes in lateral direction also takes place. And the nature of these changes in lateral direction are exactly opposite to that of changes in longitudinal direction. Means here if length is increasing then in lateral direction width is always decreasing. So lateral strain that means change in lateral dimension divided by original lateral dimension that is delta B by B that is delta T by T that is delta D by D. So lateral strain that means change in lateral dimension divided by original dimension and the nature of these changes in lateral direction are exactly opposite to that of changes in longitudinal direction. So Poisson ratio is defined as the ratio of lateral strain to the linear strain and what is the symbol of Poisson ratio that is mu or 1 by m. So mu or 1 by m is equal to lateral strain divided by linear strain. So lateral strain that means Poisson ratio multiply linear strain. So Poisson ratio that means 1 by m multiply linear strain and what is the equation for linear strain that is sigma by e. So what is the equation for lateral strain that is 1 by m put the value of linear strain that is sigma by capital E that is Young's modulus. So lateral strain equation that is 1 by m multiplies sigma divided by capital E, Young's modulus. Now we derive relation between bulk modulus and Young's modulus. Here, first we consider a cube subjected to three mutually perpendicular tensile stresses of equal intensity. Equal intensity that means the magnitude and nature of the stresses is same. That's why sigma x is equal to sigma y is equal to sigma z is equal to sigma. So first consider a cube subjected to three mutually perpendicular tensile stresses of equal intensity. That's why sigma x is equal to sigma y is equal to sigma z is equal to sigma. So sigma that means stresses on the faces, L that means length of the cube, V that means volume of the cube. We know that volume of the cube that is L multiply L multiply L. So volume of the cube that is L cube. Capital E that means Young's modulus, capital K that means bulk modulus, mu or 1 by m that is Poisson ratio. Here the stress sigma x produces tensile strain along x axis whereas sigma y and sigma z produce lateral compressive strain along x axis. We already discussed that when changes in longitudinal direction is taking place, changes in lateral direction also takes place and the nature of these changes in lateral direction are exactly opposite to that of changes in longitudinal direction. That's why here the stress sigma x produces tensile strain along the x axis whereas sigma y and sigma z produce lateral compressive strains along x axis.
Let us now consider the strain of one of the edges, say AB. Due to stresses on faces A A1 B1 D and B B1 C1 C, side AB of the cube will suffer tensile strain. And we know that tensile strain on AB that is sigma by capital E. Similarly, due to stresses on faces A A1 B1 B and C C1 D B1, side AB of the cube will suffer compressive lateral strain that is 1 by M multiply sigma by capital E. Similarly, due to stresses on the face A B C D and A1 B1 C1 D1. Side AB will suffer compressive lateral strain that is also equal to 1 by M multiply sigma by P. Because we already discussed that tensile strain equal to sigma by capital E and lateral strain that is equal to 1 by M multiply sigma by capital E. So here let us now consider the strain of one of the edges say AB. So due to the stresses on faces B B1 C C1 and A A1 D B1 side AB of the cube will suffer tensile strain that is equal to sigma by capital E. So stress divided by modulus of elasticity. Similarly due to stresses on faces A A1 B B1 and C C1 D D1 the side AB will suffer compressive lateral strain that is 1 by M multiply sigma by E. And similarly Due to stresses on side A, B, C, D and A1, B1, C1, D1, side A, B will suffer compressive lateral strain that is 1 by M multiply sigma by capital E. Because the stress sigma X produces tensile strain along X axis whereas sigma Y and sigma Z produces lateral compressive strains along X axis. Here we take sign convection that is tensile we consider positive and for compressive we take negative. So here net tensile strain inside AB will be sigma by capital E minus 1 by M multiply sigma by E minus 1 by M multiply sigma by E. Tensile that means plus and compressive lateral strain that means minus. So here first we write net tensile strain inside AB will be delta L by L is equal to sigma by capital E minus 1 by M multiply sigma by E minus 1 by M multiply sigma by E. So sigma by E that is common. So sigma by capital E that is common. So in bracket 1 minus 1 by M minus 1 by M. So sigma by E in bracket 1 minus minus 1 by m minus 1 by m that is minus 2 by m. So delta L by L is equal to sigma by capital E 1 minus 2 by m equation number 1. Now we know that original volume of the cube that is V is equal to L cube. So differentiating with respect to L. So delta V divided by delta L what is the differentiation of L cube that is 3L square because differentiation of X raised to N that is N X raised to N minus 1. So what is the differentiation of L cube that is 3 L raised to 3 minus 1 so 3 L square. So rearrange this equation delta V is equal to 3 L square into delta L. Dividing both sides by V, we get delta V by V is equal to 3L square divided by V into delta L. Put the value of volume. So that is delta V by V is equal to 3L square. Here we put value of volume that is L cube. So L cube into delta L. So rewrite this equation as delta V by V is equal to 3L square. L square into L into delta L. Here instead of L cube we can write L square into L. So L square L square cancel out. So delta V by V is equal to 3 into delta L divided by L. Put the value of delta L by L from equation number 1 that is sigma by capital E 1 minus 2 by M. 
so here we put the value that is delta v by v is equal to 3 instead of delta l by l we put the value sigma by capital e 1 minus 2 by m from equation number 1 so volumetric strength that is 3 sigma by capital e in bracket 1 minus 2 by m equation number 2 now we know that what is the meaning of bulk modulus bulk modulus that means it is the ratio of direct stress to the corresponding volumetric strength so bulk modulus is equal to stress divided by volumetric strength so k is equal to sigma what is the meaning of volumetric strength it is the ratio of change in volume to the original volume so delta v by v put the value of delta v by v from equation number 2 that is delta v by v is equal to 3 sigma by capital E 1 minus 2 by m. So here bulk modulus k is equal to stress sigma divided by 3 sigma by capital E 1 minus 2 by m. Sigma sigma cancel out. Denominator to denominator goes to numerator. So k is equal to E divided by 3 1 minus 2 by m. Rewrite this equation as E is equal to 3 k multiply 1 minus 2 by m. So in this way, we derive relation between Young's modulus, bulk modulus and Poisson ratio. So simply follow three steps. First step, we find net tensile strength inside AB that is delta L by L is equal to sigma by capital E 1 minus 2 by M. In next step, we find volumetric strength that is delta V by V is equal to 3 dot delta L by L and put the value of delta L by L. So delta V by V is equal to 3 sigma by capital E 1 minus 2 by M. And then use the definition of bulk modulus that is bulk modulus is equal to stress by volumetric strength and put the value of delta V by V. So we get E is equal to 3K 1 minus 2 by M. So in this way, we easily derive relation between bulk modulus and Young's modulus. Thank you.